So this is our second viewing of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We just finished, um, what, 15, 20 minutes ago? Yeah. I still feel just as sad as I did the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It definitely has rewatchability, though, because, mm. like, we feel sad because the movie ends sad, but it all of the emotions that I felt the first time, I felt again watching it the second time. The excitement, the, you know, the little moments of, like, comedy, the frustration, like, everything. I felt all of it again. I think that's part of why I, I, I wasn't rushing to go back because I wasn't sure I wasn't sure if the re if the rewatchability was there oh, interesting like part of me was like you know certain movies they sort of serve their purpose and like that's not like necessarily a bad thing um, it could just be some movies you can watch multiple times you can pick up on other things like watching inception for like the third or fourth time you're bound to notice something you didn't notice before versus some other movies you watch it you get that experience for the first time and it just can't be replicated yeah and then you factor in you know this is this this is such a unicorn a unicorn of a film experience because it is also like a funeral slash goodbye to like a real person which we've never really had to do like this not in a way that I was this emotionally impacted. Though. No. Um, where, like, you're saying goodbye to a fictional character and a real person that they're kind of joined together, like two yeah. sides of a coin. So that's kind of why I wasn't, I wasn't rushing to go back. That and the fact that I was also, like, very, very sad. Um, and I do wonder how many other people probably felt that way, you know? After about the third week, there was a pretty big drop off percentage wise. I mean, it happens for all movies, but for this one, it, it was pretty noticeable of a difference. I just don't know if people are rushing to go watch a movie that makes them feel very sad. Yeah, um, probably not. <laughs> I really like the first black. I, I think that they are both equally as good as each other. If not, Wakanda Forever might even have a slight edge over the first one. Mm. But I think, like, the first one, it was like a rush of just, like, it was just all good vibes. The whole movie was just good vibes, okay? Like, yeah. it was just all of these firsts happening for the first time, like, so many black women on screen at one time in a Marvel movie, and just... The action scenes, just everything, all of it was just like, this movie is for me. This is for us, by us. And so, like, I couldn't get enough. Like, I think I saw the movie, like, at least three times in theaters. This movie was FUBU? Is that what you're yeah. telling us? <laughs> but um, it was... Like, yeah, I watched that movie, like, a lot in theaters. We went, what, maybe four times? Yeah, probably. And with, like, different people. Like, you said... Remember, remember Joy? I think she said she went, like, seven times or something crazy like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I know a lot of people who yeah. went back and just rewatched movie over and over and over again. Because the rush that it gave, especially oh. if you're a black person... I, this is probably very specific to black people watching that movie. But there was so many moments that the emotional payoff was so good. And it was good every single time. Mm. I still think about the casino scene... When you first hear their chant. Yes, too. when you first hear the chant. And when you just, I was just like, I've never seen an action scene that featured black women. Like, I've never seen it. I can't think of another time when that would have occurred. Like, white people are probably watching that. Like, why are they cheering when she takes the wig off? Like, they're not going to pick <laughs> up on a moment like that, you know? That moment. And then there's the moment where um, Daniel Kaluuya's character kneels to Okoye mm -hmm. in the battle. I, I, was, I just about got about my chair. I was like, yeah, you better. Um, there's just so many. Even like a lot of Killmonger scenes, too, too. Killmonger scenes had a lot of emotional payoff for me, too. When he yeah. first shows up in the, in the museum, mm -hmm. and he's like, do you think that your ancestors like, did they asked when they stole? Price. Yeah, whatever he said. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was good. The music and everything that comes in with him, you know. I'm not on a 
you know, there's some people that are like, Killmonger was right. I am not. I don't believe that. No. But I remember the first time that I watched that film, I had such a deep connection to that character. I was like, you're wrong, but I get you. Like, I really get you. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought Ryan Cougar did such a good job just capturing that. He just knows what he's doing. But capturing, like, that sense of abandonment of, like, what it means to be black American, like, what it means to understand that you have this whole history and heritage behind you that you don't have access to anymore because of all of the violence. And I'm not saying that being black American and, like, our beautiful culture is not enough. It's definitely enough. But there is still, like... Like, I can't call America home for real, you know, yeah. because, like, it don't really claim me back. I They just did such a good job. They did such a good job capturing that feeling. So, I don't, I, there was just a lot in that movie that made it easy to want to go back over and over and over again. This one, there's a huge rush of emotions as well, but they're not necessarily, like, energizing. It's a, it's like a very painful movie from all angles. Every single character in this movie is operating through a lens of pain trauma and loss and so you're feeling that the entire time yeah you're they are that they're, they're examining grief from a lot of different angles so i think of like nakia she's had to in many ways experience the death of the child like multiple times in the first film, they think he dies in Infinity War, and now this time again, I, that's a lot. Yeah. That I don't, I didn't always think about until like after we watched it the first time, and I'm like, I understand now why she probably didn't go to that funeral when, and she says the lines of like, I, I needed it to break me. Yeah, she said she needed to allow herself to break. Yeah. yeah. Like, that that's such a real feeling of, like, when you go through, like, a deep grieving process, being strong is not always the healthiest approach in every single scenario. I would and, argue almost never. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got something that I found pretty interesting if we're since we're talking about grief is the almost like the dichotomy between Shuri and her mother and how they're sort of processing grief. So here's a couple of things that point that stood out to me. I think Black Panther is definitely the first movie is a, is for black people. In a lot of different ways. I think this movie is for black people and how tied our culture is to like spirituality and or you could just say like Christianity as well. Like, I mean, just look throughout our history, like the role the black church has played still continues to play. The first thing you sort of hear Shuri say is essentially, boss, if you help me save my brother, I won't. Um, like I'll believe in you. Like I won't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, so and I'm, I think about that, like in my own life, God, if you help me get this thing, like, I won't doubt your existence or like, I promise I won't sin again. Like I'd say stuff like that when I was younger. And I feel like a lot of black people, they've gone through that same sort of, you know, religious sort of experience versus what happens later on. She completely moves away from her faith because in that particular moment, her desperate plead out for her deity like wasn't answered. Again, mm -hmm. like that's something every black person can relate to. Versus with her mother, she goes, I would say, more in on her spirituality to the point where Shuri's like, that's like that's what you're experiencing isn't something real. This is just your brain essentially trying to find a way to process and comfort what you're experiencing. Um, and then later on with Queen Ramonda, Namor sort of represents like the crumbling of like the dogma that she probably once carried because all of the folklore and the tales that they tell themselves about the exceptionalism of Wakanda, specifically with vibranium, isn't true. 
until Okoye comes in and says, she essentially says, if this isn't true, what else isn't true? Like that, again, reminds me of the the deconstructing process that a lot of people go through in their own spiritual journey of like, wait, I'm being revealed this new information that changes the way I just consider my belief system. And you have to reevaluate and try to still make sense out of the world while still sort of honoring and valuing that your faith has. So it, it it's all of that is just a it, it's such a it's such a he knows how to tell a story about grief that is contextualized for black people because you i just don't think you can tell a story about grief with black people without having the element of like spirituality christianity mm-hmm. faith in it it's just too tied to our story uh, yeah uh, I thought about I kind I thought about something similar. I don't know if I quite know how to say it yet. Um, I think I thought about what you were saying. I think I thought about it through the lens of like identity and like the layers of loss. There's there's layers of loss in this movie, mm. right? Because there's there's the literal loss of life, obviously, and like the people that you love and care about. Yeah. And then there's also a loss of identity that's a huge part of that and is like deeply tied in. And I think the spirituality part ties into that as well. For Shuri, I think even before this movie, they hinted at the fact that she was not, like she wasn't very spiritual, that she didn't Mm-mm. buy into that much, right? Like M'Baku has that line that he says, I can't remember. Who scoffs that tradition. Yeah. Um, so they, they've already sort of hinted that her whole identity was science. That was her yeah. thing. She was like, this is what I be- believe in and this is what I know works. And then science failed her because she wasn't able to save um, T'Challa, which I was thinking about this, this, this during the second watch too, and I was like, they did a good job of making the events of the last movie matter in this one because the fact that Killmonger burned the purple herb is the reason why T'Challa died. Yeah. If they had had the herb, they would have been able to save his life. And so the choices that people in that movie mm. made, that when I was thinking about during, I'm going to go back to my point, but I was thinking about that during Queen Ramonda's um, speech to Okoye when she when she like fired her, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, I stood by and I watched while you and all the generals in this room defended, with Sai, right? No, it was Killmonger. With Killmonger. Yeah. And I was like, actually, that matters a lot because the fact that he was allowed to stay on the throne for long enough to burn the purple herb is the reason why they couldn't save T'Challa's life. Yeah. Um, and so I was thinking about how for Shuri, that sense of identity, like I think her faith in that was weakened some. That's why she doesn't try again for a long time to recreate it because I think she's like, afraid of the failure and also like what is the point but i think that was a big loss for her of that not just that she lost her brother but that she she felt like she i think some i think for her the science in the same way that for other people in her culture like their spirituality and their belief in um the mysticism and their ancestors provides them a sense of security and a sense of assuredness that everything is okay and a sense of like eternal well-being right mm-hmm. like even if things are not well in this life like i know things don't end yeah but for her i think what gave her that sense of security was the science it was like so if something comes up i'll be able to handle it and fix it and then the worst thing came up and she wasn't able to fix it so i think that was a huge loss for her and then she didn't have anything to fall back on she didn't like because she already didn't believe in the spirituality of it and she did so she had nothing mm-hmm. else and so i feel like at just already her like her sense of self is sort of falling apart and her then, identity yes yeah and then to lose her mom and she says at the funeral she was like i just lost the last person who really knew me so my heart is buried with her it's like every pe- every like her mom was her one tie in to that to the cult to the that culture and tradition yeah. that was sort of like her one like i think you know it's one of those things it's like you know like i'm not really gonna do it. i don't really believe it but like i know my mom you know like when you, like there's people that are like i'm not really that spiritual but like i know my grandma prays for me and like yes. that i think yes. it was like that yes. you know like that's what it was and now that person is gone too and um i don't know it, it got me thinking about just like the 
how important your culture is to your sense of self and your identity and like that how important that connection is because she doesn't come back to herself until she finds that reconnection at the very end when she sees her mom before she's about to kill Namor. So I was thinking about that. And then for Namor, he talks about how he, he, when he comes out the water, he's like, um, my mother used to tell me stories about a place like this, a place where the people never had to change who they are in order to survive. And so for them too, it's like, I, it's interesting because when he said that, I was like, that's actually very different than how I was thinking about um, Talo Khan in my first watch. In my first watch, I was like, oh wow, this is like this amazing place where like this whole culture that in our world has not been completely lost, but that has been, a lot of it has been, mm -hmm. right? But in this world, it's like this whole place survived. Like it's like this beautiful thing. Like I was like, that's like their Wakanda, right? Like they, you know, were able to preserve all of this by hi like essentially doing what Wakanda did, hiding away. But when he said that, I was like, oh no, they, to them it's a huge loss. Like to them it's a huge loss that they had to hide away and change how they lived and survived and go underwater in order to maintain themselves. They made something beautiful out of it, but it's sad still. Can you walk me through some of the history with the conquistadors in that? So they're clearly pulling from history here what what's the story with mind in the conquistadors because i don't think i fully know that and i think depending on your understanding of that history i do feel is how well you'll sort of be connected to namor as like a villain yeah i don't know if i can give specifics on like what specifically happened with that i can give like a general overview of yeah, what yeah, i know yeah. of like the general happenings of like christopher Columbus saw that but like they came they the Spaniards. Okay. So Spaniards came to like this, you know, this uh, that whole area of Latin America, and they brought a lot of diseases with them that that like, killed lots and lo like lots of indigenous people died because of the diseases that they brought, mm. and then of course they were also violent and enslaved people, and also they were trying to convert people to Christianity. So there was like lots of different affronts happening at the same time. You had a physical disease that was taking people out just physically people are dying from this disease you also have an attempt to wipe out their culture because you are trying to convert them but you're violently trying to convert them like yeah. they don't have options and then you're also enslaving them and you know how enslavement is also going to so those were yeah. spaniards those are spaniards were... okay yeah and because that's why that's why his people don't speak spanish but other people the descendants of the of them do because they were colonized that that makes his hatred for the surface world a lot more meaningful mm -hmm. i know he he explains it in like a monologue and granted the movie was already nearly like three hours long he had to rewrite a whole bunch of stuff he being ryan coogler had to rewrite a bunch of stuff add new scenes in um but i feel like the rewatch that i we just experienced made no more more understandable because i i sort of knew the history but not to like the full extent after the rewatch and us discussing that now um yeah i've seen a few people say that too second time watching it you enjoy it more yeah it's interesting i don't know if i found him more understandable this time i felt much different about his character this second really? time yeah the first time i watched it when people after the movie when i watched it the first time when people were calling him a villain i was like i don't know if he's a villain because Definitely. i thought he was more of like an antagonist right because i re the first watch through i felt a lot i still feel a lot of empathy but I was like very conflicted. Like I remember in the theater, people were like cheering during that last fight scene. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I, every, I was like, everything about this is bad. Like I don't, I don't want them fighting each other. I still don't want them fighting each other. But my this time through, I was trying to think whether were his actions justified. With and, which actions? Um, all of them. Well, let's well let's let's back up. <laughs> like, I, I want to process all of this, all of this, because this this is like a very important movie. Um, you've got Riri Williams. Yes. What are your thoughts on what Namor was suggesting, which is just kill the scientist, aka kill Riri Williams? 
Um, I I guess I understand why that would be the logical choice for them, being that they're trying to remain um, secret. But I I I think that the point that the movie was trying to make on the second time on my second watch through was that an action being logically justified doesn't make it morally right. Mm. And and I think that was the that's a lot of what was happening with Namor's character. Is that you can look at his what he's trying to do logically and say, I I understand that and I, I understand the stakes are very high for you and why you, that would be your go-to choice of action because that's the only 100% sure way that you can prevent this from happening again. But it's still wrong. And and then I, I think his, um, his dealings with Wakanda too are interesting because we know that he has an understanding of power structures on the planet because he says to Shuri, he says... Um, people have been, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something along the lines of like, people have been enslaving and oppressing, oppressing our people for centuries. So he understands, he understands the concept that there are other people on the surface of the planet that are victims of the same kind of violence that he despises but then he enacts that violence on Wakanda. But he only does it as retribution, though. He does it as retribution. See, and that's what I was thinking the first time I watched through, watched it, too. But on this watch through, I was thinking, and I was like, at no point in this movie until the very last fight scene does Wakanda become the aggressor. They are always acting in response and in defense, and they keep his secret the whole time. So to me, it's like, yeah, you're responding in retribution to an isolated incident where they uh, they sent a single person on a stealth mission to get a specific person. That's not the same thing as sending your entire army to destroy a nation. Yeah, I hear that. I, I think I'm processing that a little bit different. I, I see this as the world is catching up in technology as what um, Okoye's husband, Daniel Kaluuya's character, essentially implies that in the first movie. It was like, eventually it's going to be the conquerors or the conquered. And you sort of see that manifest itself with them creating technology and trying to find other methods of gaining vibranium. And I'm not, I don't think they should have killed Riri at all but from his perspective he's lived through so many lifetimes in our way of processing time and i wouldn't put it past him to consider peaceful options and in his mind perhaps those peaceful options haven't gotten the results that perhaps um, Shuri is, is considering. And so in his mind, he's like, listen, you're young. You don't really know how the world of men works. I've been here for thousands of years. I know how this goes down. That's sort of how I process this. And so if they are in Talakan, they're negotiating. He's kind of put his guard down at that point. I, I think it was more so the level of betrayal that he probably felt in that moment because this was the first time he had brought someone from the surface world to their city. And so that in and of itself was a very significant moment because even some of his people didn't seem to be like cool with that idea. And he kind of puts his guard down. And then in the process, Wakanda kills a person. But you, he can't look at it that way because he's putting his guard down after he's already acted out of aggression. The people that he has acted out of aggression towards 
don't know. They don't know that he's acting in good faith down there with Sheree. They don't know any of the conversation that's being had down there. Yeah. To them, you showed up, you attacked the lead general in our army, and you kidnapped the princess and took the... Like, that's what it looks like to everybody else. And he knows... He has but to he, know he that's what it looks Queen like. he told Queen Ramonda. He told her, but she had already sent... It was she, that she was only talking to him as a distraction. Nakia was already down there. So I just I don't know to and I, I I do wonder also if like because even in his conversation with um even his conversation with um Shuri after he you know he showed her everything like yeah he let his guard down and everything um but he wasn't giving her an option that conversation that he had with her at the end was either you help us or we, we destroy you. That's it. That's Wakanda. you know. That's not allyship. I I think he's sensing urgency. I think there's desperation there to protect his people. Yeah, I think so too. But I think that comes back to the point of just because it's justified doesn't mean it's right. That's kind of what. That's kind of where I was coming to on every point, on every yeah. one of his points. Well, what do you make of? They're clearly building up. It looks like the U.S. invading Wakanda. At, at some point. I mean, that's probably why Agent Ross, um, Allegra Devontaine is, is she, you know, she's like dreaming of the idea of the U.S. having that kind of uh, vibranium. And the more says at the end of like, they will come for Wakanda. So like, his morally speaking, no, but like, I still kind of felt at the end of the movie, like, damn, was he kind of right? Because he's saying if we were allies, they wouldn't dare. I th- I agree with him, but I don't think that he acted in a way that would build allyship. I think Shuri's actions at the end is what built the allyship. Shuri didn't threaten him. Shuri said, we'll protect you. She did threaten him. No, she said, if you yield right now, we will protect you. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a threat. It's a, you, she's essentially saying, if you don't yield, I'll have to kill you. Okay, fair. But, <laughs> but, no, but it's, it's different still. Because she's not actually asking anything of them, really. You know what I'm saying? Like he yeah, was, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. saying, get in on this on our terms or you're dead. Mm-hmm. She is saying, back off and we'll protect you. You know, like that's different. Yes. That's building allyship. Yeah. That's saying we have mutual, we have mutual, um, like it's a mutual agreement, right? Versus, a, versus I'm forcing your hand to, into doing something. So what happens, I'm assuming in the third movie, we will see Wakanda invaded by other countries. Wouldn't it have been better to be proactive as opposed to trying to build an an ally with Telecon? Being proactive, how? What exactly do you mean? Killing Riri. That, I, that eliminates the problem, at least for the next 10, 15, 20 years or so. How? Because... Because she was the only scientist who knew how to create the machinery. But by the time that they knew, she'd already done it. And instead of killing her, they, they took out... They, she's no longer a threat to them because they made her an ally. They didn't have to kill her to, to neutralize that threat. Fair. But, I mean, there's other... They could threat... The U.S. could threaten Riri. They, hold her family hostage. Oh, they could, but she mm. knows now that she has Wakanda backing her. That is true. So she's way less likely to be scared and way less likely to have to be scared. I, I just want to say, like, I, I do, I did not want him to kill Riri. I'm just no, trying to, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, but this because no, because this, the first time I watched it, I was thinking the same thing. But this time through, I think I'm, I think it were, I think it's the same trap that a lot of us fell into with Killmonger. The first watch through, I was never like, yeah, Killmonger. But yeah. the first watch through, I, I was like. He's making some points. Things are making sense. 
after a while, I sat back and I was like, no, actually, there's a lot of alternatives to the, to his methods that could be have been just as effective that he just didn't think to do, right? Like, he's trying to help black American people all across the world. He's trying to free them. And he thinks violence is the best way to do it. But actually, there's other ways to do it. And in the end, that's what T'Challa, I hope that's what he does. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with Namor. I think both of them, because they're acting from a place of trauma and pain and anger and vengeance, they're going straight to the most extreme option because it feels like the only one. But that's the mindset of an oppressor. That's the mindset of the people that they despise. And so if you go through with that route, like even this idea of like, like it's the conquered or the or the conqueror. Like if Namor is thinking in that mindset, then taking that to the his to the logical end, burning the world means he becomes a conqueror. Yeah. And that's that's not solving a problem. It's creating a new one for other people. Mm -hmm. You know? So I I think it's the same thing here. I think there was actually other ways to go about protecting his people because the thing is like in order to protect his people they all he needs to do is keep them keep them unknown that, that's that's really it you just have to protect them going out of your way to attack the world is actually putting your people in more dangerous danger because you're exposing yourself yeah i this is so one critique and I tried to think through that, and after watching again, I, I, I still don't think I agree with that critique, which was the movie made Wakanda look weak. Like, they didn't like the idea of, like, Mayans, you know, mm -hmm. dominating over this is supposed to be this powerhouse of Wakanda. I think initially when I first heard it, I think I was like, okay, I, I can kind of see where we're coming from. I think re-watching it, you have to show Shuri's entire world in a very vulnerable and weak yeah. space. That you can't have Shuri weak and then like Wakanda is still like standing strong. Like you're not feeling the weight of what she's experiencing in that moment. I also think seeing Wakanda that vulnerable, it validates the significance of the Black Panther because once she drops down into um, the mountain yeah but what what's Jabari, his name? Once, once she once she drops down into Mbaku's cave something is just ignited with everyone in that room like they are recharged yeah that confirms the influence that Black Panther has culturally over everyone there. Like, when Nakia's like, it would be a gift to everyone, the same way it was in their origin story. So I, even in that, I, I just, I, I struggled with that because it's like, man, I don't know if we're seeing this movie the same way. When Shuri drops down, I had fucking goosebumps. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, the Black Panther is back? Like, I don't know if that moment would have been as significant if it didn't feel like all hope was lost for Wakanda. The second critique is the absence of not Chadwick Boseman per se, but T'Challa. T'Challa is such a significant person in the comics and in the movies, obviously. And so there were all of these recast T'Challa hashtags that I would constantly see online. And I remember watching one reviewer he's a youtuber so you know he's not he doesn't work for a company he's just like his own person and the way he sort of framed it really made a lot of sense to me it's like listen i've kind of kept away from this conversation but personally i think the people who worked closely with chadwick who acted with chadwick could come up with a great solution to the lack of a T'Challa in a movie. And I felt like they did. Mm -hmm. You still get T'Challa without having to bring in another black man, put him on the screen, and ask us all as viewers to, to just, just forget pretend. that Chadwick Boseman didn't exist. 
I don't want to do that. It dulls the significance of what he did. Yes. Yeah. I I need to feel the the weight of that man went through multiple movies battling with cancer and your first thought is we just got to get another black man on the screen and call him T'Challa. That how that's not honoring who he is. No. And it's also like he is T'Challa. Like you know like Yeah, it's just, it's like Hugh Jackman, Robert Downey Jr. Like he that that he owns that character now. Yes. And you can't replace you can't. And also, I just I'm sorry but recasting every time it's done, it feels cheap. Every time it cheapens the story, it cheapens everything. We all know what happened with Fresh Prince and our two Aunt Vivs. Yeah, it's never it. It's it doesn't work because they, they did it with Spartacus too, and it 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 took me out of the story. It does, yeah, it just it simply doesn't work. It messes up the continuity. And it messes up everything, and it, and the character itself will change because the actor portraying the character is not going to do it in the same way. Isn't that what happened with Harry Potter? Who was recasting Harry Potter? Was I'm in my crazy or Dumbledore? Dumbledore. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. That all, it, it also I it, it made a like, big difference. What, this guy feels very. He feels more cruel. Yes, he was more aggressive. He was more. Yeah. Yes. It it every, every time it's done, it changes things, and it it's not it's not a seamless transition. It can't be because as much as you want to say it's just a character, the actors who portray the characters are attached to them. Yes. In our minds, psychologically. Yeah. So I, I never understood that. I never wanted them to recast but and, and I think people, I, I think they, they just, they wanted a T'Challa, which I understand T'Challa is, is important. That one movie alone made him my favorite comic book uh, superhero. I did not think that anyone would dethrone Batman for several years. I watched that one movie and I'm like, see you, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a damn. You can go. Um, but now... If his son were to carry that mantle and he has the same name, that's perfect. It's done well. That also, is perfect for me. Sign me up. Part of me also feels like all of the, you have to have a T'Challa, it feels a little sexist to me. It feels a little, because I'm like, why? Like, why do we have to if we have, there was multiple women, because I was like Team Nakia. I was like, let Nakia be. I think it's more know? so about, there are so many stories with T'Challa at the center that, I mean, rest in power, but like we we did, in theory, potentially miss out on with Chadwick Boseman gone. But I, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe the stories can't be, I to me, I'm thinking like in the MCU, they pretty constantly find ways to work in stories with the characters that they have, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it, it feels like that could still be possible, maybe not. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I mean we, it, we don't. It, it's not an issue now. We've got our T'Challa, which is why I felt like that was perfect. Yeah, but I also hope they don't rush to that too soon. I would like to have no. Shuri as. I don't. Black I don't Panther think we'll get T'Challa for a few years. And honestly, if you all are still like we needed T'Challa after watching that movie and seeing what Letitia Wright did, I don't know what to tell you, because her. I was locked into every scene she was in. She's phenomenal. Bodied that movie, yo. She's phenomenal. Straight bodied that movie, yo. I mean, like it's I'm it's sad the way that we got. Here. Yeah. But it means a lot to me that a black woman is Black Panther. Like it means a lot. Like I told you, I cried in the movie theaters in the scene where yeah, she came out of the spaceship. Everyone started applauding at that moment. Spaceship. I literally was like in tears because you don't know how long. If you know me, you know I've been a fan of superhero movies, sci-fi movies, action movies my whole life. Yeah. Okay, and I can't think of a single one where a black woman is the title character. It doesn't happen. I think this is, I know people, we, we've talked about, we've talked about this before, like Marvel has its limitations, but the fact that it will use its brand, its blockbuster multi-billionaire brand and use that to give us more representation with every movie that comes out. I just have to tip my hat to them mm -hmm. because 
this movie made a lot of money and it had a black female as the lead protagonist. It had like the three main characters. Yeah. Uh, three out of four, you know, obviously with the more, but three out of four black women. You, you you just don't always see that. You, Not on the blockbuster stage. You really yeah. never do. So I just have to tip my hat to them there because I, I just, I respect it. I respect the hell out of it. Um, I, I do think, I think sometimes people think you need a man driving the story forward in these movies. And I think this movie proved that you don't. No, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, obviously, No More was crucial to the storyline. But the driving forces of the movie are Ramonda and Shuri. And Shuri. Um, yeah. yeah, it was good to me, man. Real good to me. We also need to talk about the music in this film. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Oh, my God. It's phenomenal. And they did such a good job reworking the themes that we already know into the, something the, a little different, a little darker, a little a little less celebratory. It definitely felt darker. The Dormilaji's chant in yeah. that fight scene at the very beginning, I listened to that song. <laughs> often i am afraid of my like apple end of the year list <laughs> because it's just gonna be it's gonna be Hans Zimmer, ravine jawadi and Ludwig <laughs> Gorsan. like that those are the three people just all their stuff that's all i'm gonna see oh for the gosh. entire 2022 it's a really good track it's a really good track that whole scene that whole sequence is real good from her walking into the United oh, Nations man. to just uh, everything about that was so, so good to. This movie is honestly a love letter to black women. You could when, say that. When yeah. she walks into the United Nations thing with all of the other like Wakandans behind her, all those men, and she sits down and the men lower their mics. What we gotta say, it's the Queen's time to talk. <laughs> With the symbolism of a, of a black man lowering his mic yeah. to amplify the voice of a black woman is absolutely crazy. People talk about the speech she gave when she stripped Okoye. And that probably is what gave her the Oscar win. But her speech she gave in Switzerland with France and, and Germany and some other people, that Good. speech... That, I was like, it set the tone for that film mm -hmm. for me. Yep. Because as the monologue's going on, you are introduced to the darker tone of the film. Yep. Like, that fight scene that Dormelage have on the ship. Immediately as I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, this feels a lot more serious mm -hmm. than it did in the first one. Yeah. You know? And... That that changes the entire feel of you as a viewer that you have for that movie. I'm like, that hats off to them, man. It's very, very well done. It's very well done. I'm trying to think if I have any other thoughts. I know. I'm trying, I feel I should have like written some stuff down because I feel like I did have some other ones while we were watching that I'm trying to remember now. So, so we're are we still not we're still not vibing with the Koye suit. I don't like that blue thing. <laughs> that I, blue thing. I don't like that. It's maybe it looks cool in the comics, but in real life it needs some edits. I I'm curious to see where they take Wakanda's story now. Vibranium is clearly a very important piece to wherever the MCU is going. Yeah. Um and I, I can see a scenario where Namor is, Namor could carry like a same ideology as like a Magneto. Because one, he's a mutant and you know he's not going to be siding with no like mutant registration. He's thinking about, y'all trying to do what now? The thing is, I, to me, he carries himself as someone that doesn't care much about the politics of the surface world. Unless they directly impact the, him. Well, I think it would. I think at some point they're going to be revealed. For sure. Okay, yeah. My question is... 
because he's talking about at some point, you know, they're going to come for Wakanda, blah, blah, blah. Uh, are you, Namor, going to expose yourselves to defend Wakanda when it happens? I think so. You think they will? Yeah. I hope so. And scare the living, you know what, out of them. I hope they do. Um, we, also, there's actually two things we need to talk about. We need to talk about the scene with Killmonger in the... Yeah, before we get to that, I was going to... Because we're still on the moor. That ship scene was terrifying. <laughs> the chance I... The first one. Yes. The first ship scene yes. at the beginning. Yes, that's very At the very scary. beginning, that ship scene. I remember in the theater, extremely uncomfortable. Very <laughs> and I went online and people were like, oh, you guys have never heard... There's What's the term... Sonic. No, 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 no. It's like, like it's something like mermaids would do, or like sirens. The, yes, I was like, what is this? I don't like it at all. And I'm like, it hits you that like, these men are drowning. They're yes, dead. They're dead. Yeah. That was kind of dark for Marvel. Yeah, were, I was yeah. not no. A lot of people that. died. This movie was yeah. It was a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more edge. She she, wh- wh- whatever that white woman who was a soldier, which she's an actress that's like pretty well known by the way. But I'll get to oh, that later okay. on. When she's like shooting at them, and I'm like, oh, they die. I mean, like they took a few bullets, so I immediately thought, okay, they're clearly stronger than like a typical average human. And then the camera pans back. And they're just all standing up. I was like, "What? <laughs> what's what's going on with the with the the music?" <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> I was like, "Please let it end. Let it end. Let it end." I was, was eating that scene. You know, I, I was, was in it. I was, I was like, "Yes, scared. Take, take out these people. <laughs> take them down." Uh, no, I I that scene was very unsettling, but I also really liked it. I also am obsessed with Namora. I think she is so. I'm obsessed with all of them. So cool. Anytime she was like, who, who, whoever that actress is, the intensity she that she brought you know, well, with very few lines. She wasn't on screen that much. And most of the time when she was on screen, we couldn't even see her whole face because she had the little water thing on. Mm-hmm. She brought it. I was tuned in every time she showed up. I was like, let me set up a little bit. Who am I rooting for? I'm not sure. I really like her. I mean, Eve, Okoya held her own until she went up to... Oh boy! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I ain't gonna hold you. She got her ass beat right she there, did. yo. She did. It was a yo. Sense. That that was some boss level stuff. He kicked her spear back to her and then pointed in her face. The disrespect? Are you kidding me? But also, it's kind of respect, though. It it's is. It's kind of like I see you as like my adversary. I don't. But not yet, though, because Namora was like. Essentially, like, yo, stop playing games. We gotta go. It wasn't. He even said, like, you're not worthy of a death of my blade, or something along the lines of that. I don't think he respected her until later on. I thought when he said you're not worthy of my blade, it's because he was about to use her blade to try to stab her, and then she used her bees and was like, eh, you can't. Oh, maybe, maybe. But those two, yeah, I can see why Namor has them at his side yeah, because <laughs> hey, they are not to be trifled with. Okay, yeah, they're intense, they're okay, intense. but kill Monka scene. That was such a good twist. Yeah, it was such a good twist, and it was so. It just made perfect sense. Yeah. At first, I was like, maybe she's not gonna see anybody. Right. I, I had different theories. Why I did I like, like faintly think we would see like? Chadwick Boseman. Did that like happen? A, to you? Like a like a rendition. I don't know. I, it's I, weird. I, I don't know scenes. why, but I did for some reason. I thought about it too, but I don't think Ryan Coogler would do it. No. Um, but I I I had a couple of theories. I was like, A, she sees nobody. <laughs> like she like she goes mm. and it's her and herself in a room and she's like, I am literally by myself. Everybody has left me and abandoned me. That was yeah. one theory. Second theory was like, okay, maybe they'll have her come to Jesus moment sooner and it'll be like her mom or somebody and she'll have like a, you know, she'll wake up and she'll be like renewed, changed. Like what happens at the end? I was like, maybe that'll happen sooner. Killmonger? I didn't think about that. But when it happened, I was like, oh, this actually makes perfect sense because it's like the place where she was in her faith and in her grieving process it's like it blocked it's like it blocked her access to Mm -hmm. like 
her ancestral ties. Yeah. You know, it's like it it's yeah. like it blocked it. And Killmonger also didn't have access to his. Mm-hmm. And that was and for both of them, that was a major source of their loss. Yeah. I just I was like, oh that chef's kiss. That Perfect. was such that was so good. That two things that I would say, one that's how you do a cameo right there. Yep. Because it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel cheesy. It felt essential to the film because he was referenced multiple times. Mm-hmm. He he solidifies himself as like a true antagonist because the ramifications of the things that he did they last. are still there. Yep. The movie, it validates itself as a good sequel because of how much it uplifts the, the, prior, the, film. the prior film. Yeah. Right. And... What I would say with uh, Shuri and Killmonger, what what really makes this moment land so well for me is what you mentioned. I was afraid that she would have her come to Jesus moment prematurely. Mm. And I, I was nervous about that throughout the entire time when I watched it for the first time because I'm like, I don't know if the message will land if she heals too quickly Mm -hmm. because it's just not real. It's not realistic. That's not the people slip up. They get angry. People relapse. They they go through an entire journey's worth before they get to that healing process. And so seeing Killmonger and the message that he had for her, that showed me, okay, they are clearly trying to tell us an excellent version of how to process grief because that scene takes place and then we get the reveal of shuri as black panther and so even as we're watching her reveal herself to the entire country in the back of our minds we know she's not fully healed and so like it feels like a very high moment for her but in the back of our mind we're still very concerned for her mm-hmm. because they and everybody even, else is too. Yes, they yep. keep asking her, "Who did you see? Who did you see?" And she doesn't want to answer it because she's angry, but she's also ashamed mm-hmm. of the, the anger that she has. You know what I mean? And so, him showing up right there validates the story so much. And it hurt her too that it was him. Cause she, yeah, yes, that's she, true. she was very hurt that it was, she was hurt and she was shocked because it revealed a lot about her. Yeah. And I think it's also like, she wanted to see, she wanted to see her brother. She wanted mm-hmm. to see her mom and her dad, mm-hmm. you know? Also, um, Killmonger's in the ancestral plane. And I just feel like that uh, says something. I don't know what it says. Oh, he needed to be but there. But it's like, it says something that I he's there. I think he needed to be there. <laughs> I mean, he, he was a king of Wakanda. I think all That's kings true. go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and he was Black Panther. That that would make them look very terrible for them to see what he did and then screw him over again by not letting it in No, no, no. T'Challa would not allow that. <laughs> He's probably in there because of T'Challa. Like, he yeah. went before T'Challa. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, I don't think T'Challa would have allowed that to stand. Uh, okay. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, I hope he do a little healing up there, though, because he don't sound like it. He was talking to Sherry. He was like, nothing's changed. I'm on the same energy. Listen, like, sir. All right. <laughs> so this this is like the fan boy sort of coming out. Imagine a fight with Killmonger versus Kang. <laughs> that would be We're fire. actually going to see. Well, no, we're not going to see that in Creed 3. They're not going to fight each other. They are. What I thought I thought Creed was trading Jonathan Majors. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be some fighting between the two of them. Good stuff. So <laughs> the other moment that just will always hit is at the very end when they cut the music and they do the montage of Chadwick. Gosh darn man! I was not expecting to cry a second viewing. Normally a second viewing, I'm fine. Nope. No, I all the I all the emotions that I hit the first time hit again at the very beginning when he dies. I was like, no, oh, I was sad. When yeah. she comes down out of the thing, I was like, oh, I'm emotional. And again at the um, at the end, because you so know what that's... it was, I I hadn't seen his face in yeah. a while. We had seen videos and pictures of him, but that was when you could start to see his health declining, 
Um, even if you were to go back and watch Endgame, he even looks different there in the funeral scene for Tony Stark. He doesn't look the same as he did in Civil War and in the first Black Panther film, or even in Infinity War. So when I started to see those flashbacks, it was like this was Chadwick Boseman at his best. I think that's what made it land so hard. It's like, man, we had a good one taken from us, and like it, it just stung all over again. It was rough. And some of those scenes, too, they looked like they were, um, like, behind the scenes. Oh, like, unreleased footage. Yeah, like, some of them, he's, like, laughing or, like, hugging certain people. Mm, it's, like, I wouldn't be surprised. Very much. So, in a way, it's, like, that's, like, he's not in character. Like, that's actually Chadwick, you know? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how it was for a lot of them in this film. Like, those are probably real tears for some oh, people. Oh, for sure. You know yeah, I mean? and that also adds to the emotion is that yeah. you know that, for all, I mean, they talk about it that they were grieving while on set to film to film this. That it was a grieving process for them mm-hmm. as a community. God, it's it's never not going to be sad. It's just never not going to be sad. Yeah. It just doesn't it doesn't feel right. And so you know, it's like death is always sad. But there's some deaths that over time it's like it's really sad, but I understand, or like it was your time, or like, you know, yeah. this just isn't one of those. It's, it's like, just always gonna feel very wrong that he's not alive. Yeah, like my brain still won't accept it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like when you sort of abruptly lose a family member, it, that's kind of in the same vein, or it's just like, what do you mean he's gone? It's like mm-hmm. my brain can't comprehend it. It's, yeah. But I, I, I feel like they, they honored him well. They did a very good job. They, they did a very well. good job. They did a very good job of... They really made sure that it was a send-off for the character, but they but also for the actor, for the real person. Yeah. Even just including, like, uh, when in the funeral scene, there's, like, that mural in the background. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, just the fact that, like... Like, to, in my head, I'm like, that's a mural of Chadwick Boseman. Like, yeah. I know in the movie it's a mural of T'Challa, but, like... It's Chadwick. It's, it's a, you know, like everything that they did, it felt very intentional. Even using the symbol, like, I mean, I know we've kind of, it's become kind of like a, like a meme now. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, it's kind of a memeified, like the Wakanda Forever symbol. But um, when they use it as in the send off, when his, like, when his um, casket. casket went up, I was like, no, that's actually, it's a, it's a good, it's a really good touch because. When that movie first came out, we, we as black people we adopted that symbol as like a like a symbol of pride, like a thing, yeah. you know. And like Chadwick was doing it a lot on. Like, I mean, there was like that whole joke of like this man is tired of <laughs> posing, like you know He's they like, are sick Wakanda of this. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> they are sick of this. But then when they repurposed that moment as it's not just about that; it's about it's a I don't know it's a sign of respect yeah. for him, like for him as the character and him the man the actor they just did a great job of 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 tying tying the two together and that's also a testament to chadwick and how well he fit the role and lived the role and also the way that like the sim the symbolism of black panther i just want to say the what black panther symbolizes as a character to us this idea of like uplifting the of uplifting the black community of black unity and black pride mm-hmm. chadwick like lived that for real you know like like he he attended the hbcu he went to howard he did that he spoke at their um commencement a few mm-hmm. years ago and like er, like everything that he did all the roles that he took mm-hmm. everything that he did was like very intentional and it was all about about us. It was Even, about our community. It's, I mean, he didn't have that much sway and clout when he first got into the MCU, but he's like fighting these Marvel executives to not give T'Challa a British accent because he's like, mm. if he has a British accent, that literally means they're colonized. I can't like, believe you they can't, would even, like, are y'all stupid in the head? It's, I don't know. <laughs> but but um, even things like that, like yeah. he's still very much aware of the underlying message that that would perpetuate about blackness. Yeah. You know? 
he just yeah a real life hero gosh man he was just so good he played so many icons in such a short period of time it's crazy jackie robinson thurgood marshall he did a lot Well, I think that might be a good time to wrap things up. Um, we'd love to hear from some of you all. What are some of your favorite moments in the Black Panther Wakanda Forever film? And thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.